Subtask is a special issue type in Jira, kind of similar to an epic, and you get only one instance of this issue type by default in your Jira instance. But what if you need more than one type of a subtask with different fields, maybe a different workflow? How to do that? That is exactly what I'm going to be covering in this video. By the way, this video is part of our effort to deliver the high quality learning and training materials inside the Atlassian ecosystem, Jira, Confluence, and all of the apps. If you want to support us, consider subscribing to the channel, liking the video, posting a comment down below, but also if you want to reach out to us for paid services, which we do offer in this area, you're absolutely welcomed. And the link and an email address you will find in the description of this video and probably somewhere on the screen by now. Now, coming back to the subtasks, this video has been inspired by one of our customers that came to us and said, hey guys, our testing team wants to have an additional issue type where uh, which, which one they will be able to use as subtasks in their testing procedures. And why don't they use the normal subtask? Well, because the normal subtask has some fields which, which, which they don't need, and also uh, it is lacking some fields which they want to add to a subtask. So in order not to make a mess on a whole instance and to change the existing subtasks for everyone, they decided that it would actually be smarter to add a new issue type of a subtask. So I'll be showing you how to do that today. It's not really complicated, but it's worth knowing that it's possible and it's worth knowing um, how to handle this. So the first thing you will want to do is probably go to configuration and issues. And by the way, this area will be available only to Jira admins. So if you're managing the instance, you will be able to do it. If not, you will need to ask your Jira administrator colleague uh, to do it for you or with you. And then you go to add here, to add an issue type here. And we're going to name it test team sub uh, task. There you go. Um, a sub task for testing purposes. Perfect. And we're going to make sure that we enable here the subtask issue type, not a standard issue type. Okay, that is very important. We hit add and the new subtask will be created. We can search for it and we can see that it's here. Um, if we, of course, want to edit it and do something else to it, like change uh, an image of an icon over here, then uh, absolutely this is something that you can do. Okay, so now we have this uh, new issue type already created, but that's of course just part of the journey, the first step. Now let's imagine that this is the project for the testing team. It's actually a remnant of uh, one of the previous videos that I've been recording, but since I have it here and I forgot to delete it previously, I'm going to reuse it and create more mess in it. That's what I'm good at, definitely. So we're going to go into this project and I'm going to go to project settings because now what I need to do is I need to enable this issue type to be available in my project because currently it's not. So I'm going to go to issues and types over here and it will show me all the issue types currently available in my project. And you can see that there is a standard subtask available, but not the new one I've created. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to say edit issue types and we're going to make sure that now a new subtask, test team subtask, this one, is going to hop into um, the issue types for current scheme in our project. Now, what I could do, which I'm not going to do, is I could remove the standard subtask from here, okay? That, I, and normally I probably would do that, but I also want to show you what will happen if you don't do it, what will happen if you don't do it. So I'm going to keep it like this. Normally, for the sake of you know clarity, it, it's better to remove the, the other one because they want to use just this one, not this one. Uh, that's the whole purpose of this exercise. But I'm going to use it, uh, I'm going to leave it here so that I can show you later on what happens if you have two issue types uh, of a subtask. All right, so this happened, we already have it. So now if I go back to the project and I go back to my issues over here on the left side, there you go, it's loading slowly. Right, and I go to one of the tasks, 
tasks, doesn't matter which one really. All I want to do is I want to create a new subtask in my task. So I'm going to do that. And if I hit that, normally you would just type in here the name of the subtask and you're done. And this is this would be true if I would remove the default one. But because I didn't, now I have a drop down here and I can choose which type of a subtask do I want to create. And I can switch from the default one to the test team subtask and then um, I can say make a list of whatever and a subtask will be created for me and it will be a subtask let's let's just visit it briefly it will be um, yeah it doesn't show over here because we didn't change the icon but if I if I hover the mouse over here you can see that it is a test team subtask and of course we could now make this subtask have different fields now how do you make this I'm not going to go into a lot of details of that because that's another story, so to say. But I'm, but I am going to quickly show you how you could approach this uh, with not making too much of a mess. So if you go again to the project settings and to the screens, you will be able to see which screens are currently used in your um, scheme that is used in this project. So you can see that I have the default one and I have a separate set of screens for um, for a bug issue type. And in my default one, I have the test team subtask, okay? So let's now imagine that I actually don't want to use the default one for this one, because then it will be the same as the standard subtask. And you know, the whole purpose of adding a new one was, was for it to have different set of fields. So let's say a bug has a different set of fields and that's the one I want to use as my test team subtask. So how do I do that? I go to actions, I go to edit screens. This will actually take you out of the project and again into the area for uh, Jira admins. Um, so you land over here and again two screen um, two screens uh, the default one and for the box screen schemes actually and then you click over here associate an issue type with a screen scheme so if you do that you will be able to now select an issue type that you're looking for in my case this is a test team subtask and I want to associate it with um, I'm looking at the name up here you know CI scrum issue type and that's the one CI scrum default screen scheme that's that's the one that you know this issue type is assigned by default because it's not assigned to anything else but i want it to be assigned to a bug screen scheme okay so i will select this one hit edit and magic will happen and now you can see that uh, we also have a test team subtask which is assigned to the bug screen scheme that's exactly what we wanted and from now on anytime someone tries to create a test team subtask it will have a new set of fields well maybe not new but a different set of fields compared to the default subtask um, and of course you could go deeper you could create a completely new screen scheme for the test team subtask um, you could create a new set of screens for the test team subtask but this is not what this video is about i just wanted to show you that it's absolutely quite easy to create a new type of an issue for uh, as a subtask and use it in your projects so that you can have more flexibility when it comes to creating and populating the issues with data. If at any point in time you're struggling with things like this, you can always reach out to us for paid services, consultation, any kind of help or training in the Atlassian environment and we will be super happy to help you and share our experience and knowledge. And it's as easy as dropping us an email or using the contact form on our web page and you will get a reply within the next few hours. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. If it was, again, consider giving this video a like so that the algorithm pushes it to more people that are searching for these kind of information. You're awesome and I'll be seeing you in the next video.